Okay. Well, it's 7 o'clock. Yeah. We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, we have a uh, delegation of Nikki, and so if you want to come up to the front here, you uh, have 15 minutes to give us. First of all, I want to say thank you guys for hearing me out uh, about my concern about snow removal. Um, and like I said in my letter, I do not at all speak for Alberta Health Services, who is my employer. However, I am an individual who provides services around town and Vulcan County um, medical services for our most vulnerable people um, and those getting out of the hospital who need assistance. Um, one of my concerns um, as of late has been snow removal because those services on numerous occasions have had to be cancelled for people who live out in the town of Vulcan um, because of the, the roads, the town roads of Vulcan. Um, at our discretion, home care is able to uh, cancel services uh, when it's not safe for us to go into a client's yard, like out in Vulcan County, or if snow removal has not been done, because uh, safety is paramount. And we've had to cancel, like I said, numerous times for clients in the town of Vulcan. Um, specifically, Whispering Creek, um, on Whispering Drive there because we couldn't get down Whispering Drive. Um, and re as recently as, I think it's 3rd and 4th Street North, which have always been quite bad for us to get down. Um, and it's not just one day that we have to cancel services, it's two. And I think as, you know, a town, we can probably do better for our senior community out there and our more vulnerable clients um, by addressing the, the snow removal. And not just the snow removal, but the clearing of the roads in a timely manner. Um, I do know like, that in speaking of people who have done snow removal before, that uh, they've started before people go to work. Now, I know in your QP contract, it says that it's, you know, um, the hours of work start at 7 to 3, and then 3 to midnight, but... Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering, like, if it maybe started earlier, or if we did see more people out at midnight, it wouldn't be such a monumental task. Um, I do know this last snowfall, uh, the snow removal was a lot better than what I've seen it in the previous snowfalls this year. Um, however, by six o'clock at night on my road, which is Second Avenue, which goes by um, Extend the Care and then down by the post office, going 30, I was still fishtailing at six o'clock at night because the snow removal wasn't done. Uh, I did get high centered. I have a four by uh, as well, car to get around town. Lots of our senior community don't have that and are unable to go around in a car. I know if I had a car, I wouldn't have been able to get around this last snowfall. Um, and I'm just wondering if there are things that we can do better for our community um, because home care is only going to get busier. We have an aging population. Uh, people want to stay in their homes as long as possible um, before they go to a lodge or a long-term care. So, and we don't want to cancel services and people need medical services because our job is to keep people out of the hospital. But we can't do that if we're canceling services because of the safety of us driving around town. So that is my, that's my concern. And like I said, it's happened more often this year than it has in previous years. And I think that when we look at the policy, we could probably look at doing better because this is a snowfall that we that lots of people haven't seen, and this is a snowfall that policies get made on. So you plan for the worst, not for the best. So that's what I'm saying. And um, like this March third, I know that um, for two days we had to cancel services, and the first day. Uh, we start at 7 o'clock in the morning, and by 1.30 in the afternoon, the, town, the roads were still not plowed enough for us to get to people. We do offer morning and evening services, so both had to be cancelled, um, <clears throat> and that's including the lodge. 
Uh, the street down the lodge was quite bad this year, and I think it does that needs to be addressed because it is one of our um, one of our populations like that's older. They're pretty much 80 and above, and they still drive around, and they can't get out. And if we can't get there, that's the majority of our services. So I'm just asking that that you consider maybe looking rethinking the policy and looking at how we can do better. Okay. Any questions, Frankie? Yes. How many days, you mentioned the two from the March 3rd snowfall. How yeah. many other days throughout the winter have you had to cancel services? There was January when we had our other big snowfall then. Uh, there was also the one in February on Valentine's Day um, where the visibility and everything was so bad we had to cancel services in the snow. Uh, there was also a time, and the one in January actually came, uh, there was a post on Facebook about it, um, about how someone in the town, like from the neighborhood, actually had to clear Whispering Drive in order for us to get in. And one of our girls got high centered, uh, trying to provide care in that area, and had to be pulled out. So, and that, did you look at the list of the priority of, of what streets are cleared first? Yeah, have you seen, I did. Have you seen that policy? Yeah. It's on the line. It is right and, here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Center Street, from yeah. Center Street to First Avenue South, from Center Street to Sixth Ave, clear paths and arteries leading to Center Street, uh, starting with South, clear sidewalks, clear the stockpile, business, airport, senior center, tourist center, and all remaining streets and alleys need to be done. Yes, but I think that we need to maybe reconsider because the lodge is an aging population um, and we do as home care, that's where we provide a lot of our care. And I know you guys are speaking about the lodge today as with the Marquee Foundation. Um, and it's like, again, um, home care provides services all over town. And in order to keep people out of our hospital, they need us out in the community. So I do know that on this last snowfall as well, uh, on the Sunday, a first responder, or yes, I believe it was a Sunday, a first responder had his car, his, had his truck stuck and wasn't able to go out and make a call because of his stuck truck. So I think when it affects emergency services that we have, because we are a small community, that maybe we need to look at addressing this and maybe considering that we could do a better job. Okay, Michelle? Um, sorry, um, just two quick questions. You said on the four February 14th, it was driving conditions, is that, you had said foggy and stuff like that, is it? Blowing snow, all that as well. Okay, as well as the lack of snow removal? Yeah. Okay, um, and I'm sorry, what was the date you said about the first responder getting stuck? Uh, that was Sunday after this last, March fourth. Motive is large fourth. Okay. So, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, uh, we did. We do review the policy every so often. Um, the policy was reviewed and changed uh, back when the EMS moved from the hospital site to the RCMP, and also when the fire department moved from Center Street and Third Street to. Uh, to the, to the Tri-Service Building. And then we also changed the policy after the RCMP moved. And then the policy was reviewed last year and updated. And uh, so it has been changed, you know, three times. The policy is, you know, has been in place for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. and, but it is reviewed on a, on a periodic basis. And uh, we take what you have to say to uh, um, heart. Um, uh, there are communities that um, have far better snow removal than we do, and there are communities that have none, and uh, we're somewhere in the middle. And um, we uh, do it with the staff that we have to try and keep, you know, um, we only have five staff members that, we only have, we have eight, two that work full-time or at, 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 at the arena, and then six. That, and if I could, um, uh, that's what you read in the union contract, that's their, their hours. Okay. For when they work in the arena from seven till three, okay. and then the majority of the outside staff was from seven thirty till four thirty okay. on, on a regular day, and on a so, note to that, 
And through January and February, we have the highest rate of council approved, the highest rate of overtime that we've had since we started keeping track of it in 2003. Mm -hmm. So they've for the five employees, they've put in as much overtime as we've been allowed to, to work them. So through this. So period, again, so. we haven't looked at it. We don't have a, a line item in our budget. We do have money that we do allocate you know, towards theoretically snow removal, mm -hmm. but you know, it could be used up somewhere else in the, in the year, depending on what it is. So we don't have like the city of Calgary where they have a straight line item for snow removal. We could do that. Um, you know, I, I did ask him if uh, the administration could kind of calculate what it would cost to, to uh, you know, increase snow removal on a, either hire a, more staff or hire more equipment, you know, or purchase more equipment, mm -hmm. or, you know, hire a third party. The biggest problem we find with third parties is trying to find somebody that can do it without being paid, you know, to sit around and wait for us right. to call them. Right. Um, because generally, all the ones that we know of right at the moment, uh, third party, or generally have already contracts to do other jobs in the mm -hmm. community. Um, you know, this year we're fortunate enough to have had a, uh, a new loader that was purchased last year um, to replace the, an aging loader that gave us some issues and, and died. And so, you know, we've had probably better or, or uh, an opportunity to use better equipment this year than past. But um, I too travel the country. Probably I put more miles on than, than any healthcare worker in this community does. Um, I average 50,000 kilometers a year mm -hmm. and I travel from anywhere from Calgary south to Lethbridge. And, uh, I, I think that our town crew has done an exemplary job at trying to keep the majority of the streets as clean and uh, passable as possible. Could they do better? Yes, they could, but again, we're going to have to increase taxes. And I don't think there are too many people that... Um, I kind of did a rough calculation. I talked to Kim how much we pay our staff and how we'd work it out. And I would, I would say that we'd have to raise at least a mill, maybe two mills, uh, you know, per household or per... Um, to, to increase our, our uh, level of uh, snow removal. Again, I, I do know that there are some communities that have, you know, would like to get in there and clean it. Uh, mm -hmm. I have kids that live in Lethbridge that have seen on one street, have seen zero, nothing. They haven't even seen a grader on their street. Um, we have, uh, over the years, have taken the, the, the town's crew, has taken the idea that they will try and clean a spot at every stop sign and sand it as on a daily basis, if not, you know, depending on the snowfalls. And um, I think they've done an exemplary job of trying to keep the snow at bay. Again, you know, could they have done better? The only way we could have is we would have increased staff or hired somebody to do some of it. Um, again, we have looked at partnering with other communities, and unfortunately, if we get snow, generally they, they get snow mm -hmm. at, at um, for moving snow. And um, to you know, and so you know, I, I, I appreciate your comments, and um, you know, council can take a look at the pros and cons. But again, I personally believe the only way we're going to you know increase it would be to increase taxes. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and I appreciate what you're saying that you know, seniors are our most vulnerable to a degree, but uh, um, there are you know opportunities for us to take a look at the 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 program that we offer but uh, again you know to to make it uh, curb to curb again for some areas of the community it's impossible and there are some areas that we do not do snow removal at all at all period and one is whispering creek um, you know it's it's a bare land condominium it's privately owned land their streets belong to them not to us um, no we do um, whispering green and <coughs> which, which whispering drive but again, it's on the priority list. Um, it's as, as residential, and it gets the same priority as every other street in our community. Now, whether um, going up beside the, the um, Peter Dawson Lodge or up to Extend to Care, um, again, there are you know areas that we try and um, deal with on a on a basis, but. Uh, if council so desires to, to take a look at the policy and go through it again, and, and um, you know, with the information you brought forward, um, I've had only three people that have contacted me personally about the um, 
lack of snow removal and when I, one of them was on a back alley and uh, once I explained to them that we try to do the back alley so the garbage can be picked up, mm -hmm. um, you know, and she understood and the other two had concerns about other streets, but I probably have had at least 20, 25 people that felt the opposite that uh, compared to other communities that our community is as good if not better at uh, cleaning the streets. Um, again, I don't mean to harp on the situation, but you know, um, we only have so many dollars and cents and so much manpower and equipment. And personally, the only way I can see that we can increase that would be to increase um, our um, operating budget to, to compensate for that. And to, get, uh, to, to guarantee that you're going to have the people when you need them, you know, we're going to have to, uh, uh, I think we'd have to increase the, the staffing levels because like Kim said that we do, um, we did pay more out of overtime this year than we have ever done mm -hmm. in snow removal. And, um, and again, you know, even though that they start work at 7.30 in the morning, there's lots of times on, on Main Street, um, you'll see them in the business section trying to clear streets before anybody gets down there because once the vehicles get in there, it's pretty hard. Um, we have looked at you know closing the street down completely. Businesses you know don't like to see that. Um, I know the city of Calgary have snow routes that they you know we have people remove their vehicles. We you know have never looked at a snow route in, in our community. Um, it might be something to consider. That's for sure. I would just hope that as someone who provides medical services in town, like medical services are a priority. Um, I know that we're not essential like EMS and that. Um, that my opinion with snow removal and those clients who have also backed this, me coming here, would hold a little bit more weight than those individuals who, who maybe think that you're just doing okay. Um, I know that, you know, 3 versus 25, like, when you look at the ratio of numbers, you, you know, it doesn't look so great for those who don't think that we're doing great, but as a medical professional who has to cancel services for individuals to keep them out of the hospital, <laughs> um, I, I would hope that the town would um, consider these opinion, this opinion to be a little bit more weighty than those who, who don't maybe work and have to cancel those types of services. So, okay. Any other questions or comments or thoughts? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for taking the time to... Mickey, do you yeah, have any right. suggestions as to what, if we, not to raise taxes, but what, what other solutions do you see? Well, I do shift work myself, like I always have as a nurse. Um, and maybe putting people on shifts, like when we know like a, a heavy snowfall is coming, like maybe hold the amount of people off from working like during the five day week and be like, okay, for these days that we're expecting a heavy snowfall, that we have people that are going to work from, you know, 7.30 in the morning till 4.30 and then like 4.30 till midnight. It wouldn't be... I, I know there's only five employees. There's only five employees. You can't, you can't run a shift with less than do, employees. There's only five employees. You can't, so, you can't run a shift with less than do Normally, we run four on a, on a snow <coughs> removal shift, and so um, without do, either hiring more staff. And right. then, you know. And I do know, like, my brother in law was hired from April to November um, during the summer months. Is there any way that maybe you can take some of that away from the summer months and maybe do it for the winter months when you yeah. are expecting that snowfall? Because well, it's only going to get worse. I mean, to think that this is a one-off would be poor planning. Um, so I think that maybe we could do that. And maybe when we look at um, the graders around town, like, you'd need more staff. I mean, you would need more staff for my suggestions. So, yeah, exactly. Okay, well thank you very much again, and, and like I said, um, Council will either put on the agenda for later to discuss, or else we'll bring it back to another meeting and, and discuss the pros and cons and get some pricing on, on what it would cost. But the only way I see us increasing is to increase taxes. Right, and I think when you look at this, um, like when you're thinking about your, even your seniors housing complex, and that that you're looking to bring to Vulcan, all of this comes into play. I mean, if snow removal is not done around town, 
people can't get there for work, people can't get there for medical services. I mean, I know home care provides a lot of services in um, like lodges and stuff like that in Calgary and assisted living places and all that. So I would just hope that you guys would consider that as well. Okay. Okay. Well, thank, thank you very you. much. Yeah, thank appreciate you. that. Thank you. You're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting if you like. Okay, moving on. Um, Public period, we have none. Uh, agenda, we have one item to add. So, um, Michelle wanted to add 14.1, which should be under the um, in camera session, victim services, and it falls under meeting or um, 18.1b, which is uh, personal information of an individual, including an employee of a public body. So, anything else? Can I have somebody move the adopt the or the agenda? Lyle does has amended. Any question on Lyle's motion? And none all in favor? That's carried. Okay, moving on to council meetings, February 26th, the minutes. Any errors, missions, questions? I'll move those for receipt information. Paul moves. Any question on Paul's motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Okay. Okay, special meeting of council on February 21st and 22nd. So there's two together for the two days. Any questions? Okay, George Lee. Any question on George Lee's motion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's carried. Okay, unfinished business. We have none on the agenda for tonight. This is financial statements. We have none for tonight. Moving on to correspondence. Any questions on the first one? Questions? Go on to the second one, which is the Rona House Society. Invitation for a 10th annual meeting on April 14th. Refresh my memory. Did we do anything last year? Uh, I think a couple went two last years ago. Was it? Two years ago? Or I, else we did. But did we you went, guys go we, your... No, we went to Rona House special thing in the park. Like oh. There was no cost involved. Okay. Um, I just remember you guys going to. Yeah, that was in, um, I'm going to say June or July in High River. Oh. And it was their X number, I forget what year of, the, I'm going to say 10th year of being in business or something. So okay. It was very good, but I haven't been to anything like this. This sounds like a, a gala type. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a bit of a fundraiser too, I think, to a degree that they. But it, well, it must be at that price, yeah. Well, is uh, is there a spot like for someone who's like I know when I lived in Brooks, there was a house for yes, there is. This is what you're trying to say. Yes. Yeah, there's a spot in town. <laughs> not here. Our, not our place but that people can yes, but yeah, not but in it, town. Yeah. It's the closest left bridge or no? There's uh, High River. High River has one, oh, okay. and that's that's Rowan the one house. that's yeah. the Rona House. And yeah. it isn't always necessarily in. Um, yeah. A town or a village, it can be in a country setting. Too. Right. But they have a designated place. They facilitate it. For yeah. Right. And if, if someone's needing that sort of help, who would they contact? Well, it, it falls through quite a few different categories, yeah. but you know, that knows about their own house and how they get into the system. So the RCMP, through the victim services, through the hospital, the hospital FCSS. FCSS. Mm -hmm. Oh, here in town we have a few resources. Yeah, they have. Okay. So theoretically, hopefully, one of them will be able to um, assist them to get into a facility like this if there's a need for them. Okay. Um, unfortunately, they're probably like every other organization, they're, they're in need of, you know, corporate funding or funding to keep them alive and, and going. So, and so, I think that's what they're kind of going after is, is looking at this gala as a, as a fundraiser to assist them in either expanding or, or 
being up there for the public itself. And if there isn't room at the leave, they will find room so. in another community. So I, I don't think they actually turn people away as such. No, and I know like with victim services too, if um, there's any kind of issue, like they will do set people up in hotels and stuff like that for, you know, depending on the situation. If it's on a local here that, you know, because of kids or whatever, they also do that. So they don't have to turn everybody or anybody away. Thank you. Okay, so any thoughts or questions? If not, somebody wish to move the correspondence to be filed? Lauren? Any question on Laura's motion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's clear. Okay, moving on to board reports. There's three there for us. Any question on the first one? Are the mayors and Reeves as interesting as they have been in the past? No. It's hard to tell from the minutes, but... No, they, they've really taken a bit of a downturn because the provincial government's not very friendly at, at sending any any people to, you know, bring discussions. So um, we're hoping that that's going to change with the election coming up next year, that they'll start feeling that they need to talk to us. Any other questions on the Mayor's Reeves? Okay, moving on to the golf course. Okay, seeing her here none, we'll move on to the library board. Laura questions because she wasn't there. Oh. Well, kids you know, nowadays. Yeah. We were in Lethbridge. Yeah, we were. I was down at the library just the other day and they are working on the doors. Yeah, that's, it's always been a bit of a, that's a bit of a challenging one for them to get it fixed to, to meet everybody's satisfaction, that's for sure. I think it's because their exits are so, I'm going to say wonky, but that's probably not a right choice of terms, but uh, they do have to have special uh, circumstances yes, yes. for each one, yeah. so it makes it really quite difficult. Yeah, it's, it's, there isn't a, a true proper way that they could have acquired that to use the facility the way it's been designed. So, Are they 100% recovered from the um, water? No. No. Stu mentions it in his report that uh, they're trying to schedule the, the repair work and the contractor hasn't given a time frame yet. So but they're and they needed to get a second opinion. I don't think that's been done yet. Are they like open at least during oh, the yeah, yeah, I don't think it really affected them as openness no. as for either them or FCSS. I think they were pretty well able to recover as quick as possible and, and not either. Well, but it wasn't. <laughs> the, it's, it's just not. It's just not finished. And the the only visuals that you can see in the building is where they peeled the baseboard back, so you can see the jagged drywall on the bottom. Oh, so so it's, it doesn't. Impacting. And with bookshelves, it hides it pretty well. So yeah. there's there's a big visual impact to it. So I know the food bank didn't get any water. No, no, no. But I think it was the basement that got. It was the basement. Yeah, the yeah. use center. The use center. Yes. center. But, uh, but again, I think they were fairly quick, quickly got back up to operations. Town, and town staff was on that right Yeah. Yep, so. Was that that night or that same morning or whatever that they ended up coming in? Yeah. Right away. Okay, so any other questions on the library? Well, if not, we'll start with Laura maybe. And... Okay, I attended the Marcus Foundation and we had the auditor's report. He does a very, very thorough job. So an hour and a half later, <laughs> we had read every line and every number. So I, I give him credit for that because uh, he took his job very seriously and we certainly went over it every way, shape, and form, which is good. Uh, we went over some new policies. 
are, I shouldn't say new policies, policies that hit, are being updated. They're doing similar to what the town did last year. They're kind of keeping things up to date. And then the other thing with the Marcos Foundation is I had thrown out there that the town perhaps would uh, consider meeting with them. And I think maybe if we can put that on our agenda. It's on the Yeah, that's okay. what I thought. So. Uh, to set up a day or a time to, to meet with them, just to yeah. try to brainstorm how can we all work together. Uh, Tom went to Health and Wellness Foundation, so he'll report on that for me. Uh, we went to the Calgary Home and Garden Show. We all had a wonderful time either getting or coming home or both. <laughs> and I aged at least 10 more years going from the corner store to High River one morning. But <laughs> other than that, it was good. And I don't think there was the turnout at the Home and Garden Show that we saw in the past. Now, I didn't do the same shift as the time before, but to me it was down. And I think, George Lee, you thought that night it, it was very slow. Yeah. Really slow. Yeah, ours was okay because it was from 10 till 4, so we kind of got the bulk of the... Did you do Friday or Saturday? Saturday. So, but, uh, you know, the road conditions were horrendous, and I think anybody that lives in Calgary or anywhere around just took one look outside and said, I'm not going anywhere. Um, South Grove, uh, Michelle and I both attended that last week, and we heard Doug Griffiths last Wednesday night speaking on change. Very, very interesting and lots of food for thought there, I'll tell you. Uh, new ideas that he, he's gone from his 13 ways to kill your community to this change and it's coming. And then the next day we had uh, Mark Baxter speak on retention, expansion and marketing report. And I do have for him or Karen or Bonnie or someone, we can download this um, report. It's a, what, 136 pages or something? So I chose not to do that for you guys. And <laughs> you, we'll, you. we'll provide you with digital copies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, and anybody can go on and, and read it. Um, so it really, um, this will give us our uh, individual profile. It's uh, three different studies done over the last few years by different groups. And it talks about, um, the importance of websites, the importance of branding, the, in the importance of our trade areas, um, and you know what can we do as opposed to say, I'll pick Nan, you know, a town similar to us, their trade area might be totally different than ours, um, their whole profile might be totally different than ours. And then um, there's also another site, and Kim maybe knows about this, Alberta Regional Dashboard. Yeah, okay. So we can get data off that from the government of Alberta if we need. And then we talked about um, Rita, the Regional Economic Development Alliance, and uh, I think 28 of us belong to that in the corner. And it, here again, I think it's a great resource. I think here again they're talking collaboration. So everywhere you go, they're talking that. So I think. If you want anything done and we want any money for it, we better be collaborating, which I think is a really great idea. Then we started on a three-year strategic plan, and I had to leave before it was over because I had a dentist appointment, unfortunately, that I couldn't get out of. And uh, we'll let Michelle fill you in on that one. And then this is the slide of the speaker in the morning, and I don't know if anybody wants to have a look at it. And, uh, we can, it's a synopsis of the 136 pages. So if anybody's interested in looking at that, I have that for you. you and put that was, on the council wall again. For sure, you. yeah. And it was uh, um, quite a variety of people there. The whole county was there, plus three staff people, I think. And uh, they did separate us into tables so that we weren't sitting with our friends. <laughs> <laughs> Not that the other people weren't your friends. And uh, we did have people from Milo, or Arrowwood, uh, I believe a fellow from Milo, uh, Champion was there, Carmen Gay was there. So there was quite a good representation from our, our county, so that was good. And I think that might be something at your communication meeting to maybe discuss a bit. And that's all I've done. So do you, want, did you think we should add that to the communication meeting? Well, maybe I should run it by somebody first to have a look at. What do you think, Michelle? 
You think that would be? You know, I don't think it would hurt. No. Yeah, like I think it's there's a lot of good information. Yeah. And, and because they always ask us for input to add yeah. to the communication meeting. I think so. maybe that would be a good idea. And because the county was all there, yeah. and because some from every Lowman was the only one I don't think I saw anyone from. So, you know, people would have a good idea so they know what we're talking about. Okay. So Sounds good. How about your pile too? I'm done. Okay, any uh, questions for Anna? Can you refresh my memory on that meeting? The communications meeting? Oh, I believe it's so changed. changed it to the 12th of April. Of April. Of April. Okay. And yeah. I'm not there, and two others from the county aren't because of the oh, of the, uh, housing. Housing. Senior 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 housing yeah. convention. So, Michelle can guide you through this. Okay. Right? Um, <laughs> okay, any other questions for Marla? Just really okay. quick because I realized I didn't have okay. Do you have the, um, the drawing of the four word vision statement that they felt? I wasn't there at the very, very end. So no, I was at the beginning. Oh, oh at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, no. Ask me at 3 o'clock in the morning and I'll tell you. But <laughs> <laughs> right now, not so good. Anyway, originally I just switched binders, so it was in my other one. Um, but it was incredible. Like Doug did a phenomenal job um, at South Grove in terms of guiding them through their strategic planning and providing the education, especially for smaller communities and smaller rural communities, and seeing our needs being so different um, than the typical urban setting. Um, and even the point of Vulcan being so different to Nanton in terms of, you know, the services, the demographic, you know, the population density and that kind of thing. So that was really, really phenomenal. And, you know, I definitely agree with Lorna where, you know, going through and adding that information, it was incredibly enlightening. Um, and so for other reports, um, Community Futures, they had um, the strategic planning and the next regular meeting is the 17th with, and they've been doing their Saturday board training. Um, so February 24th was the first one, March 17th is the next one, and also April 21st. Um, and then next on March 22nd, they'll be doing all of their year-end reporting. Um, and I won't be there, but Laura will be in my seat. Um, and a lot of that too was the meetings have been planning and preparing for um, John Lockhart, who's been with Community Futures for 18 years, and he's finally retiring. Um, he's an incredible, phenomenal, you know, person and resource, and a really, really amazing leader for everything that I've seen and been very fortunate to have him. So that's been a very huge undertaking because he's been there for so long, and you know, one of those guys that just knows everything, has been there through everything, you know, could say all that. So that's been a big part of the Community Futures plans and meetings as of late. Um, and then, yeah, there's little. Michelle? Hey, no, Nora? Uh, I had none. Tourism was rescheduled, I think. Hey, no, Nora? Uh, I had none. Tourism was rescheduled, I think, three times. Mm -hmm. Now we're into April, so. Oh, okay. But you went to the home garden show. I did go to the home garden show. Okay. And it was a good thing I had nice neighbors because it was <laughs> quiet. Oh, okay. Which one? The one across from us, the cemetery guy? <laughs> well, there was a lady there. Oh, was she? Yes, and then the guy in the roofing company next door kept bringing chocolate, so everybody yeah, was like, he was nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> He's a regular. The, the cemetery one's the first for this year, I think. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Any questions for Laura? Hearing that a little I too did a shift on a Friday evening for the Home Garden Show, and it was pretty quiet. I mean, the weather was. It was bad, it was ugly, you can't find much about that. Plus there was a Calgary Flames hockey game. So at about seven o'clock it was pretty quiet. But I still think it's it's beneficial just with the weather and you know, other than not having it on a Calgary Flames hockey night. Huh. I still think it's beneficial because I snuck out and uh well Ron was still there and went through the trade show and I had my Uniform, right? My uniform on. Oh, yeah. people, people recognizing. 
oh, where is he from? You can walk past him there. It's a good conversation starter anyway. So. But on March 1st, I went to the Old Man River Regional Services Commission general meeting in Lethbridge. On a side note, uh, that day, the village of Nobleford became the town. That was noted. So that was kind of cool. Uh, we had a guest speaker from the Southern Alberta Land Trust Society. Uh, it's mostly for land like, to the west in the Pincher Creek, uh, Waterton area for uh, people who want to save money. Capital gains and uh, transfer when they transfer money down through the through generations, just money can be held in trust uh, to help keep um, lands transitioning from agriculture to this greenery, like for grazing for cattle, to the provincial and national uh, parks. It was pretty interesting, but uh, it didn't really apply to to our area. Um, there will be a GIS uh, meeting in September for updating, obviously, our GIS uh, systems. Um, for the Regional Subdivision and Development Appeal Board, as of April 1st, appeal board training becomes mandatory. And, uh, oh, and they did give us a cannabis update. Now, this is still in the Senate, um, so nothing's fully legal yet, uh, obviously. And they're thinking the sale of the edibles portion. I don't really know enough about it. I'm guessing that's what you add to your yeah. grounds yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, they're saying it won't be legal at least until uh, 2019. Uh, but they figure there will be online sales uh, available for people using the Alberta Gaming and uh, the Care website. So that should be kind of interesting. And that's. Did they, did they say anything about you know whether we should be creating some bylaws or concerns about? Mm -hmm. The municipalities. I know that the city of Calgary has just gone through that whole process, and, and the, the province does have minimum setbacks from schools, and hospitals, healthcare facilities. And uh, the cannabis is federally regulated, so they've already set that out. And because we included it in our land, land use, oh. we, we already got all offers okay. it's 400 okay. years from any residential. And so it's not I think this was one of the things that they were talking about in a previous meeting that our town should be planning for ahead of time and like redoing our bylaws. And and that, uh, what we've already been, we're, yeah. we're kind of a step ahead on that, uh, according to these guys, so that's okay. positive. Yeah, because yeah. because your, your friend that, uh, <laughs> not the one that's across from us at the Home and Garden Show, but the guy from the, the roofing company, he says that he's opening up one in, in Nova Scotia, a grow up one though, in Nova Scotia, like, but, uh, so that, that's a little different, but I, I perceive the county has had an application to do some rezoning too, so. Yeah, yeah I was talking to Jason at this meeting. And yeah. I just read it that, that they had, you know, they're, they're, they're a ways away, but they're still, you know, you know, looking at how they can accommodate that, this future growth and that. Well, it's coming one way or the other, so we need right. to be, again, one step ahead. Okay, anything else on this one? Any question for all? So we were across from the cemetery plot. <laughs> yeah. Did you notice that when you're going live long and prosper, people aren't wanting to look, but they turn this way and they don't want to look either. <laughs> so they're just beetling. <laughs> not not all of them. A lot of them were very very good. But we Sue and I used to laugh about that because every time we did that, they. Um, Freaked out a bit until they got past, and then they'd look back and go, "Oh, okay, so it's not so scary." <laughs> These people are doing that. Well, I mean, they offer, they offer ten thousand dollar I know um, gift across of, at the but cemetery no, one, but yeah, uh, it was hard for getting people. I think to that's all across Canada. <laughs> well, yeah. maybe it was, but that's not I until didn't, the end of October. Yeah, yeah, I, I, never, when it was yeah, I never went much. over and visited. They. I put my name in. Oh, did you? ten grand. <laughs> Well, I, people that, yeah, their husband and wife walking by, and the husband will, to his wife, and will like this. And, yeah, and people that I knew were really 
excited than Trekkies. I, I got some pens. And I would say, hey, oh, come here, come back here. Gave them, and, and it just a simple little thing like that. I think it's they re people remember stuff like that. So. And the number of people that either have relatives that live here, yep. have lived here, or have come here, is it's quite phenomenal how they they stop and, and they tell you all these stories. Oh, they want to tell you everything. <laughs> Sometimes a little too much. Very well, we want to talk. Okay, thanks, Lyle. Perfectly. Um, yeah, the, the Saturday night at the Home Garden to me it was really slow. Even looking out at the main walkway just down from us, there was nobody walking up and down there. It was it was really slow that night. And I uh, did the puck drop on the Friday night. Thank you for doing that. Um, Lots of uh, questions about my jacket. Get <laughs> 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 that, and uh, then um, I was also at the uh, rec meeting. But Bonnie highlighted all the, the important stuff from the rec meeting in, in her minutes, and, and I didn't make it to the water commission. But Paul will tell all about that. Any questions? Well, uh, that, that, that's it. Yeah. Okay, any that's questions for I George have. Lee? Okay, we'll move on to Paul then. Sorry. And yes, I was at the water commission. Uh, we amended a couple of bylaws and you know, sent Kim copies once they're signed. Basically, op operation and provision of services on the one, and rate, rates and fees on, on the other. Uh, approved the payment policy and straightened out a long standing issue with a, a water license from Champion. And it was just basically, it was a wash. But just to get it off the books. Mm -hmm. Home garden show. Uh, I would suggest anybody who's got ideas, get them to Nancy. I already sat down with her on some of it. And a number of you went to the, I know you were there, at the uh, pool party. And they sold all the car tickets, according to the announcement at least. Yeah. Sounds quite successful. That's it. Okay, any questions for Paul? Okay, I guess it's me because Kim's got a report in there, but um, I was at the Waste uh, Authorities. Uh, there's nothing really exciting going on other than um, the burn. They're having issues with um, the burning of the, of the burn pit. And so if uh, we're going to try and have a meeting between the town, county uh, reps, and environment, and the waste authority, and see if we can settle it. If we can't, and we have to uh, alter our operations, we can almost see a doubling in the requisition. Um, and being that it's only affecting the, the Vulcan burn pit right at the moment, um, the general consensus was that we would look at probably have to do something for the whole the whole area. Uh, so we're hoping that we can solve that issue of concern about the burning of the stuff. Um, I did go to health and wellness for, for Lorna, and um, they're going to hire a facilitator to come up with a bit of a business plan for the new, new hospital addition when, it's, uh, when it comes to be in fruition of how they're going to deal with you know, the booking of it and using it and, and you know, so that they have a, a good idea because they're meeting with AHS on, on how, how it will be booked and how it will be used. And, um, they did, um, <clears throat> the tenders did go out and they did have uh, seven tenders back and so there'll be a discussion coming up soon on um, the price for the addition and how it will fall out. Uh, I think that's pretty well it. I did go to the home garden, um, the same with everybody else, and I was very fortunate that I was there on the Thursday night, which the weather didn't turn out to be until after I left. Um, by the time I got to the north side of Calgary, um, roads were impassable, and, and uh, it was pretty ugly by the time I got to the north side of the city to where we spent the night. But uh, again, like you said, Lyle, uh, uniforms, big hit, um, especially when you were walking around. I did have a couple people that asked me if I was at the right convention, but <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, it was uh, well well worth it. So um, 
again, it, I think the numbers are down even for the Thursday night, and that was even before the snow. Um, you know, had hit, you know, like I said, it, it hadn't hit at the there by the time uh, when I was leaving, it was just starting to snow. So uh, I, I think maybe they're they're probably going to see their whole numbers for all the, the whole, whole weekend down. But I'm not sure whether it's just a sign of the times or whether there's something there. Uh, this coming week, I do have a uh, meeting to do with the uh, hospital expansion. I have a joint use coming up this next week, uh, doctor retention uh, tomorrow, and then uh, this RCMP one that's coming up on the 28th. Um, so uh, I do have a few meetings coming up, but I think it's there. Any questions? On the burn pit? Where's the, the concern coming from? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure exactly where it's. Okay. Well, I'm sure I know exactly where it's coming from, but I don't know exactly. You don't officially know. <laughs> All I can see is that they have. They're going to have to do something to change the philosophy of the way they're doing it because. Um, so we're wanting to meet with environment because it really it's really going to affect the town for trees number one, um, majorly, and um, the second one that is if somebody has a, a house or a structure to be torn down potentially really affect that. If we have to haul all that waste to a landfill, um, like I said, we're going to see our costs, or, or I, I think I think we're going to see it, our requisition double. It, and it'll become a two million dollar you know, operation instead of a million dollar operation. Um, so it's going to be our biggest expenditure, waste will be, of any department that we'll have, is waste will be the most expensive. Um, if we can't resolve this issue, now, we, we, you know, the town does have a few things that we potentially could do to try and reduce and, you know, the waste authority is looking at ways of, you know, going with scale and, and um, but then we have to in, in, increase staffing, same as everything else, we have to increase staffing and that's where there's a major cost. And have somebody there watching and saying, no, you sorry, you can't put that in here, it has to go to the land, you know, up to the top to be landfilled. Um, and maybe bringing in a shredder, shredding and then trying to dispose of it that way. Um, so, but it's, it's going to be, so we're hoping that, you know, by meeting with the three major contributors, um, you know, and the uh, environment, that uh, we can solve this issue. Um, anything else? Uh, I just kind of on a side note, did you, wearing your uniform, did you go through the Talus house with all their fantastic fiber optic? No, I, I went through, uh, I didn't go through the Telus house, but I did go through, um, there was another one that was, the Telus was in the very middle, wasn't it, just down from us, those big 45-foot uh, trailers? They were, there was the, the tiny homes. Oh yeah, I was at the, yeah, through. we went through that one. And then, and then the Telus house, and they were taking people through, of course I had my yeah. outfit on, I think people thought I was part of that, but no. Uh, and they were talking about the benefits of, of uh, fiber optic and then went through and at the end they said well, so how do you think what do you think this fiber optic come through and I said, well we already have it and you guys don't offer it in Vulcan but we already have it but thank you very much yeah, <laughs> yeah I did go through the Telus one the one in the very center I don't remember who it was was it Shaw it must must have been Shaw there were about three 45 foot trailers it was, it was quite high Just off the ground the aisle thing? Uh, um, yeah but I didn't go through that one I did keep but um, that's when I thought, you know, but I did go through the, the tiny homes and the TELUS building. Those tiny homes are just basically considered RVs. Right. So I, don't, I asked some of the people, you know, can you have them year round? And they're, they said they're built in housing standards, I guess, kind of like park models of the equipment we split. Right. They still have to have them skirted and stuff, but they're all, they're all on wheels. Right. So I thought that was. Yeah, I, I thought it was kind of mis misleading. The one weighed 22,000 pounds, but he can pull it with a half ton truck. And I said to the guy, uh, I think your GBW is a little rated too high for your half ton trucks. But, um, and so he said, well, yeah, I guess we're kind of misquoted on that one. <laughs> but anyway, any other? If not, somebody wish to move the committee reports? I'll see. George Lee. Thank you very much. Any question? None. All in favor? 
Okay, thanks. Um, policies we can violate the Atlantic Zone. Number 11.1, strategic planning priority for 2018. So Kim has put them together for what we kind of semi spoke on and talked about. Basically just put the priority list together from the round table discussion with the precursor at the bottom. Make, making those notes that uh, we really couldn't put on the list, but uh, wanted to make sure that uh, when you put it out there into the public that you know, we're, these aren't going to change any of the existing programs. These are goals for the, uh, for the near future. Hopefully that summarizes there. At the, it's pretty hard to put four hours of conversation into uh, 11 bullet points, but hopefully that summed up here. Okay, well, I think it was great that we got a chance to go through and do that, kind of get you going in the right direction. So from, from this lens, once council approves it uh, this evening, we'll uh, Make sure that, again, all the department heads have it. We can go through the staffing, uh, start working on, on, on the stuff that we are. But uh, another suggestion that uh, was brought up that uh, we usually look for something every year to put with our budget when we do the public open house for uh, the budget yeah, reports. Right. This would be a nice nice addition to the back end of that is to open it up to the general public so that they can ask questions about it and, uh, and really get some good feedback about some of the priorities that you put there. So with your permission, I will file it and add it to that document when we prepare it. Okay. Any questions on what we, on this, or any additions or deletions or? Spelling error. Oh, is there? Is there strong. one? Strong. Whispering Willow's strong pond. Oh, well, it is so. That will be changed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it might be strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will... Uh, Alter that. Yeah. So if you uh, adopt it with the amended uh, wording. Okay. La loses as amended. Any questions on Lyle's motion? I think we asked all the questions. <laughs> yeah, well, I think before. I think in the 30 hours and two days we... Spent together? Spent together. We, uh, Asked a few of those. Spelled most of our thoughts on those, but hopefully, if, if there is something that comes up, and I think Kim's got a good point there, bringing it forward on our when we do our budget one in June, you know. And this isn't cast in stone, as you got Oh, heck no, it's just. And, and that's, I made sure that that was in the top. This list yeah. is prepared to summarize the roundtable discussion for the planning session. The items are provided to give guidance to council and staff. That's it. They're in no particular order or as we saw from the list that we made previous, things change. So, mm -hmm. um, especially with all the changes that have happened in the community with, um, especially with all the changes that have happened in the community with the BDS and all kinds of stuff like that, having that list available and out in the public is a very big deal, you know, especially with, trans you know, especially with transparency, stuff like that, and with the budget. So anybody there is very open and say, hey, you know, well, where's the money on this going or where's this or how is this a priority so it opens our eyes up too to what is still going on in the background even if it might be might not be always readily apparent but i mean that's the transparency understanding i think that'll make a huge huge impact okay thank you I'm not, I'm not sure if we can um or if we want to and I, and I don't think there's a category on our website for something like this. Well, yeah, we can put it as a notice or just as an information. Yeah. I, don't know. I wonder if that's one thing we should do, throw it on there, you know, just say this is, you know, kind of just the sheet the way it is. I think it's fairly self-explanatory and explains. Um, we could throw it on there and see if there's anybody that, you know, wants it to. And, and with a note that will come up with the uh, budget meeting. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. You can amend your motion to uh, uh, include it on the website. Sure. Okay. Anything else on that? Lyle moves this, so any question on Lyle's motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Okay. Okay, moving on to 12 2, the five year underground and street improvement capital program update. Go ahead. 
So, as you're all aware, because Stu carries it around like a Bible, our five-year plan, we update on a regular basis. Uh, it was updated and passed November 23rd, 2016. We have paper copy, digital copies, uh, based on the information that we got from the completing the uh, infrastructure work on 4th Street. And as Stu talked about, uh, the raising of priority of 1st Street South. Uh, to try to get that on there quicker because of, of course, the cameraing of the sewer line that identified some huge infrastructure issues there. Uh, we asked BSEI in December to update the information for this binder, so Council actually has good budgetary prices for if the province starts raining money where <laughs> more work can be done that uh, you can go ahead with these projects. So we've updated the list. I gave you a quick summary of the changes that were made. And all basically all we do is the approval is to update the binder to keep it in so that general public comes in, wants to see what our five-year plan is for infrastructure. The, uh, the information is all up to date. Okay. So we need a motion to amend this. So move. Okay. All moves it. Any question on Paul's motion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Okay, local improvements for Block 400 and Block 500 at 3rd Street South. So the reason for bringing this forward right now is the deadline for bringing back approval for that is on March 14th at 4.30. So by March 15th we would like to tender the project if we don't have uh, substantial uh, opposition to it. Basically, so that we can get the timing down so that we're uh, tendering the project before spring hits so that we can get those better prices, which is what we talked about getting it out quickly. So uh, SEMA Plus has preemptively done the, uh, uh, the tender documents because, of course, they do the engineering for it, so they've got them ready. And uh, what this is is to allow council to give direction because, of course, we don't have a meeting in between there to give me direction that if we don't have substantial uh, opposition, that we move forward on the 15th. So to date, uh, we of course sent these things out on February 14th. And on the 500 block so far, we've had seven responses out of the 15 that are on that block and uh, five of them are in favor and two are against. And the rest have not uh, replied. And then on the 400 block, we actually have only had one response so far and it's in favor and uh, the other uh, the other 14 or 13 haven't responded and it states in a conversation with a couple of people that do actually live on the blocks uh, the information that we send out does say that if you don't respond you uh, are in favor of the so if we don't receive a response we will uh, take it as you are in favor so at this point uh, to meet the uh, criteria for the mga two-thirds of uh, block need to uh, oppose moving forward with it. So on uh, the 400 block, you'd need nine residents to oppose. And on the uh, 500 block, you'd need 10 to oppose. So that's actually impossible now with the ones that have approved it. So, so based on that information, if council is uh, willing to make a motion to do that, uh, when I have substantial uh, confirmation on the 15th after the deadline, if we don't have substantial uh, uh, grounds to uh, to oppose it, we can go ahead with the tendering process. I'll send out the results uh, by email if we do. For for some reason, if if this one block that doesn't have only the one response, if nine people walk in on the 14th and slap down opposition to it, I will definitely send you an email. Okay, so we need to do is have a motion so we can proceed if once Kim gets the rest of the Information on the 15. Awesome. Mm -hmm. this. Any question on Laura's motion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's okay. Thank you. Okay, and moving on to the senior housing one. Um, this is the discussion that we've had at the planning session and also we've had a, at the council tables here about uh, meeting with the Marcus Foundation. and. Um, is uh, so do you think we should meet before or do you think we should meet after I think we should meet before okay 
that was kind of the general yeah, the feeling, feeling I had. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so what we could do is have, um, um, if it's agreeable, we will move this that would have King contact uh, Marty and, and get the process started and try and pick a date and that would work for everybody. And, and they, uh, from the people at the meeting, seem just pick a date and they, uh, whoever could make it, uh, maybe we could give them an option of two or three just in case. Sure. But uh, if they did think that they would make every effort to be there. Would you like to host that? Yeah, we, we could host it here or, you know, if, if that would work. And, and, um, their, their room isn't very big. Yeah, it's sure. No, and then we could uh, hopefully have a good response from them if, the, if it works out. And uh, you know, like the county has two reps, um, all the, the town and the villages all have one uh, to sit on. So hopefully, if we get a good good results, then we can have a get together and go from there. So. Well, the suggestion was made that, uh, and I don't know if this would work out or not, but that if we meet with them, this information could be brought to the communication meeting, right? And then you That's would have idea. everybody else to to discuss it in one spot already. And that's why I saw I'm kind of saying before rather than later. No, that's a really good suggestion that uh, we do that before the communication because then you are trying to round people up again for another meeting. I just added it to the agenda for communication. Okay. Um, so, any discussion or questions on that? I, I think you, you know. The agenda for it would be very, very open, you know, to, to to kind of brainstorm some of the thoughts. And I think that was the whole idea, just you brainstorm know, to, to get to bring some up some of the things that we've been uh, trying to do to get some senior housing in our community. And some of the, you know, there there are some people out there that still believe that it's 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 stalled and has died and, and it's not moving forward. But uh, I think this is an opportunity for us to meet with them that seems how they. Are hurting as bad as they are number wise too. So I would move that administration contact the Marcus Foundation. Okay, and then we host. Yes. And then we we'll host it. Okay. Any question on Lawrence's motion? Hearing none. All in favor? So Kim and Marty will try to pick some times and, and send out some emails. Send out some emails. And see what we can do. Okay, uh, notice of motions. Hearing none, we move on to management reports. So, first one is Mr. Foss. So, of course, the strategic planning, we've, as Tom mentioned, we've probably spent enough time talking about that. So, the local improvement plans, uh, we're deadline obviously March 14th, and made the motion for that. Uh, I was able to contact EDF after the, uh, the last meeting. Uh, to talk to them about the land changes in land use. They it actually, it's quite funny, they keep track of uh, all of the things that were happening. So as soon as that was reported on, they they got notified. So he actually, David contacted me through email while I was phoning him, congratulating on us getting, getting the land use bylaw updated to, to accommodate for that. So they were currently working on a fairly big proposal in Saskatchewan uh, with SAS Power. So uh, they were finishing that up and then uh, we'd be able to really sit down and, and, and hammer out the fine details to the agreement. Because the previous council did get uh, quite a ways into that, and uh, so uh, it shouldn't be too bad to, to get the final uh, lease agreement put together. The fire agreement uh, has been returned from the county and uh, currently out with the uh, committee being reviewed. Uh, I've heard back from both of our councillors uh, that sit on that committee, and it looks like it's uh, it looks like it, the, the draft is is in good shape to uh, to start moving forward with it. So, of course, the meeting of interest I threw on uh, vacation days that I <laughs> yes, congratulations yes that I took last week, and I will be taking a couple days again this week as well. Uh, my wife pointed out that I took a month off for the first child, two weeks for the second. And, told her to text me if she went into labor for the third, so, <laughs> so I'm going to take a few days off to spend with my family. So, uh, on an additional note to my report that uh, wasn't included in it, uh, I spoke with uh, Jadine 
from Urban Designs this morning and the mid presentation of the last council meeting. Uh, it looks like he would like to move forward with uh, an open house, but based on that, he'd also like to, uh, council to consider a letter of intent, um, and he will provide that shortly. We can get that uh, put out and uh, see if we have something that council wants to engage in uh, to move that forward for him. So anyway, he's uh, still still interested in, like I said, he's going to be working with Nancy to try to put the open house together. Had two different thoughts on that, whether he wanted to do it. He's anxious to do something right away, but also recognizes that uh, some of the snowbirds won't be home until uh, first or second week of April. So that may be considered timing for doing a public open house. So I just wanted to have that. Other than what was presented, I don't have any chance. Baby, okay. baby girl. Yeah, baby girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Ken? Uh, just congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't distracted last week. No. <laughs> uh, in regards to this uh, EDF thing, are there any bylaws uh, regarding how many solar farms or solar stations you can have in a certain radius? We don't have that currently in our bylaws. Okay. That would be addressed through the land use, and that's why we went with discretionary use, because anything through the discretionary use will have to be approved directly by okay. council. Okay. So that was one of the reasons why we went with discretionary use on that uh, amendment to the land use bylaw for solar installations. Okay. So it allows you guys to have the final say on any of that. The only thing is, is that the it might be a one that we should contemplate in the fringe area ones. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of with that. Through the IMDP, the because IMDP. the county could approve as well. Yeah, within, our fringe. within that fringe. So, and that wouldn't. Uh, the, say, okay, say the town has A, and, mm -hmm. a, and someone in the county has B. B. There's nothing saying how close they're far for everything. Not yet, but that's the whole purpose of our intermunicipal development plans right. we're doing. Okay. And we're currently in the process of drafting those. See yeah, so that know. both both municipalities get an opportunity in that fringe area to, to say yes or no to a lot of the process and how it works. But that, under that plan, that spells it out a little better so that you don't have, it doesn't matter what it is, that it potentially could fall into that fringe. Um, the other municipality has an opportunity to voice a stronger opposition or a favor to it by that agreement. Yeah, our current municipal development plan does have a, a fringe area, so any development uh, in the county that happens in that area, we get notified as a neighbor, yeah. uh, same as any other land use process. But with that, uh, the addition of the intermunicipal development plan, it will involve us in the conversations before the applications are, are put to the public. So for a, a little bit easier process for us to voice concerns back and forth amongst the municipalities. Right. Okay. Is there anything going on about the intermunicipal plan right now? It's coming up. Yeah, there we've got uh, a meeting proposed. Uh, our planners, uh, Ryan and Ian, have been working on it pretty steady. Okay. And the committee is hopefully going to meet in, uh, well, we were hoping before the end of uh, March, but of course, trying to get everybody together is the. But they have a very decent sized draft put together on these. Okay. Okay. Anything else for Kim? Okay, moving on to Nancy's. Uh, a big thank you to Nancy and, and to Grant for setting up and, and getting that stuff all ready to go. So for the home guard show. So uh, Grant also with that uh, they're trying to find some consistencies for the comic cons that they do in that. So making sure that you know stuff that uh, is going to these shows is very consistent. So knowing that they're different audiences, so they may have different content, but yeah, the setup tear down that becomes very consistent. Okay, anything else or anything for Nazis? Okay, moving on to public works for Sue. 
When did they hope to start switching out to LED to LEDs in the rain? Do you know? They were hoping to do it before the, but uh, they they yeah. the snow removal. So they have it. I think his constant snow removal is the. Okay. I think that was done out of frustration, not not a literal translation. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, they were hoping to do it before the hockey game, but uh, and the uh, where's the carnival? But uh, yeah, so no, I was just curious. I, I knew that it was approved, but I didn't wasn't sure how they yeah that, so. they approved it, but not a hundred percent. So they will be using some of the operational budget to do it. Oh, okay. As he mentioned, well, I think he's somewhere around here, but. If the snow melts really fast, yes, uh, he mentioned that they're uh, that they're doing the, the drain, drainage drainage routes. We actually had a phone call about it today, uh, or, and also a card. Roberta Meehan, uh sent a card in thanking for the snow removal and, and everything, and then inquired uh, about Third Street South because they they went down to the pavement on or sorry Third Street North. They went down to the pavement in areas on Third Street North, and it's because that's the major drainage route. That gets out from around the backside of the golf course. So, so what they do is they feed it in with the grader a little bit more. So when water hits, it actually gets to the pavement and chews a little, rather than flooding a big pond and then making its own route, which sometimes can head through people's yards. And we don't want them to do that. No, I was looking at the school parking lot and thinking. Yes. There's a kid could come visit. There's some <laughs> concerns behind your house as well. <laughs> But they they've been around. Uh, they that's what they uh, focused on today was cutting cutting routes, uh, taking the ruts out of the top. So of course uh, people are able to still drive without uh, areas that uh, did melt considerably. And they were out steaming catch basins and culverts there to receive because of course with it going to plus five during the day and then minus eleven at night, they're freezing solid with uh, with the water. I did see them out on Sunday. Yeah, they've been working every weekend. Every, cleaning, cleaning yeah, them. So they start at 5.30 in the morning. Some of them, they, they're, they're out. Yeah. Okay. Um, who's Derek? Who's that? Personnel. Are they down? Derek Zager's the president oh, of minor he's hockey. He's the president of minor hockey, and he was oh. included because we were uh, filling the position for the arena. Oh, okay. And because they were uh, quite vocal about uh, their working relationship with Grant, oh, uh, okay. we thought that they'd be a nice one to add to the hiring committee because we do like to put uh, people on the hiring committee that do work with uh, outside. I yeah, well, I was trying to think of anybody yeah. in, in house. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what? Right. So, okay. So, not no. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Did they, did they finish the sound system? Did they did. Okay. Uh, there's two speakers, yeah, that had something to do with them, but uh, okay. nobody would notice it. Okay. And I don't know whether it was just a calibration or something. Okay. Okay, hey, moving on to the peace officer, Justin Bonnies. Oh, it's Bonnies? I'm sorry, apologies. Bonnies, Community Services Report. Right. Is that you cut her? See, so George Lee said all of her stuff was in this one. We better read it. No, no that's, the, that's the one that we that the department doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, eliminate that. Poor Bonnie, she's going to get this. I better quit doing this because she'll yeah. take it serious and I'll be in trouble. She asked if she needed to still do a report. <laughs> <laughs> we were proofreading the uh, recreation guide this beginning of this week, so oh, it's okay. getting ready to go. Well, it's getting thicker and thicker every time it's put together, which is really good. Well, we're they they were able to get another community to come on side this year. Yeah, and, and they're. Uh, it's a lot of the input from the community itself, the community groups and that, they're starting to provide more and more information, oh, which is excellent. It's quite a it's quite a magazine now, so it's good to see. 
And again, thank you, George Lee, for participating in the puck draw. That was great. And the press were kind enough to pick it up. And, and it wasn't slippery, was it? No, it wasn't. They had a carpet. <laughs> and you didn't have to make a speech. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> did that you have one? Better. I did. Oh, did well, you? just a thank you. Yeah. Just thank yeah. you from the Oh, that's good. No, like, just a couple of little lines of verbs. And, yeah. Did they ever bring the hockey jersey over? It was at the... Uh, it was at the at the dinner. Dinner. Okay, I didn't see it. Yet. It was hanging on the hanging on the sideways. On the side of, on the side of the sideways side. Oh, okay. And someone wanted to buy the lines on top. Well, they at the end they were <laughs> more than buying them. They were oh, okay. braiding them around. So oh, okay. <laughs> the lions and the lion cub got to work out work out right. Had a dance. And I really appreciate having the walking at the CRC. I think the last time I was there, there was 27 or something. Oh, like, it was right? almost good. The one day you had to have blades to. The one day I think there was over 30 or something. Oh, that's right. excellent. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. nice to see turnouts. To yeah. Yeah. Programming one of the got. times I went, I think I was the only one. It's quite lonely to walk yeah. around with their own. And Channing said today they're going to extend it till the end of April. We're oh. supposed to go to the end of March. Oh, okay. And they're going to extend it till the end of April. Oh, that's I good. I think so with the way our streets are. Yeah. 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 So that'd be well, that's nice to see because, you know, um, in the years past they've tried it and, and sometimes it's really successful and other times it's not. But it is, it's nice that there is a place where, like you said, you can go and have a bit of a walk and not worry about slip slide or anything. So. And it's free. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're walking, you get to use something, it's free. But don't mention that, they might start charging us. <laughs> <laughs> well, abuse is also free, so. <laughs> yeah. What is, sir? Right? Abuse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on Bonnie's part? Okay. Not for sure, Lorna would ask me what those acronyms were. Oh. Which ones? On the grounds. <laughs> Oh, the, oh the CSI and the VIS, yeah? <laughs> um, oh, CS, CSJ. CSJ. Okay. Okay. And the only reason is because there's a spelling mistake on the VS. I have to. Oh. And, and I honestly, I, I probably didn't think about it. And I thought, I'm probably supposed to know this, so I'm not going to embarrass <laughs> yeah. myself and ask. So Canada, what does Canada like? Summer Jobs Program and, oh, okay. and the Visitor Service uh, uh, Innovative Fund. Okay, I didn't know that one. I didn't know the Canada Service one. It's a big secret of going to the Badlands. Yes. And, and these Michelle ladies are going. attending yeah. the Badlands as well. So yep, heading out uh, more often. Keep, keep an eye out on the forum and show them some things. Okay, any mm -hmm. questions on, yes. on the rec one? If not, we'll move on to the peace officer. Okay, move on to the fire chiefs. Now, is he a full time employee? or questions on any of those? If not, somebody wish to move the management reports? Laura? Any question on Laura's motion? Are you done? All in favor? Okay, 14-1 in camera. Somebody wish to move us in? Paul? Any question on Paul's motion? Are you done? All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. We're done. By Michelle to take a shot of in camera, which was approved.
Now we need a motion to adjourn. Michelle, we move it again. <laughs> Any questions on Michelle's time. motion? Very none. All in favor? Thank you very much for everybody coming out. Thank you.